Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending the final presentation. So, uh, my name is uh, Dennis Rand, and I'm from Denmark. Uh, usually, when I present it in the U.S., Denmark is thought to be somewhere in uh, in Germany. So, it's good to have a, a small presentation here. So, I've been working in the security industry for the last around 20 years. Uh, started in offense, uh, doing a lot of penetration testing, vulnerability research and then uh, moved into defense on the incident response side, trying to interact these uh, these two things together. Uh, and in my spare time, whatever is left, I like to uh, see the world through a camera. So again, this is not uh, a guide on how to perform DDoS. Uh, this is not the goal to, to recommend it in any way. It's more to get some insights on some threats that I detected in a way that we might have some issues with in the, in the future or might already have. So background on uh, why I started this project, uh, a little bit about the anti-DDoS solutions that is usually implemented. Uh, out there in the, the real world. And then uh, I'll present uh, the tool called uh, Max Payne Taking Down the World. So the motivation of this actually started uh, another place. So it actually started with me looking into why, when I was working at the SOC and doing DDoS mitigations, I was trying to figure out why was it that a lot of these DDoS attacks were actually quite easily to mitigate. So usually you could see that it was coming from like Russia and China. If you've removed that, you had like 80% of the traffic gone from the, the DDoS. And this is primarily amplification-based DDoS attacks. Uh, and while gathering all this data for this research to figure out uh, was it due to the amount of, of vulnerable services uh, in these areas, I came to think of uh, a new way to actually attack companies uh, and found out that there weren't really any, any useful uh, or way to, uh, to secure it. So my research has primarily been focused around UDP services. Uh, I started in the beginning of 2016 to, to gather information on whatever was out there, uh, covering 20 services and 21 attack patterns. I know there is a lot more. Uh, and again, the, the proof of concept is around the UDP, but the mindset of it could easily be adopted to also include, what can you say, botnets and whatever is out there that can be used to perform DDoS. So see this as I'm presenting for the, the UDP part, but anything can go into the, the, the data set of it. So looking at how usually these kind of uh, anti-DDoS services are implemented at corporations is that you can have like an ISP-based uh, anti-DDoS solutions where at the ISP level, they are doing the scrubbing. So in case that they detect an attack, they will then remove as much of the, the bad traffic as possible. Then the rest uh, of the traffic uh, that is still coming downwards, some companies have something locally that can try to, to remove the, the last part of it. So in that way, trying to, to remove the, the volume from the volumetric parts. So this is just the, the traffic uh, correlated for the last eight months. And it is around 12,000 or 12 million uh, vulnerable services out there that potentially could be abused in, uh, in DDoS attacks. So this is also one of the reasons that this is still being used a lot. I know that a lot of reports are saying that the IoT botnets are taking over, but there are still a lot of services out there that can actually be abused in this case. So the different UDP protocols, I've collected information on the, the request size, uh, the response size in average on what I got back, what the amplification was. Was it something that was attacker control. So if you have like NTP month lists, the attacker can actually bump up the traffic. We had the memcache attacks where the attackers could really bump up this uh, this volume. So it's also a matter on knowing what is more or less static, uh, meaning from the server that is presenting this, and where the attacker can actually manipulate the, the size of this. Uh, the data that I have here is the pure data package. So it's not the UDP header in itself. 
it is uh, pulled away from this. So looking at a global view on where the, the problem is, it's more or less all around the world, uh, even though America is, uh, is heading off still. So uh, make uh, America great again. Uh, and I don't know if it's easy to see, but there is uh, around six to 7,000 potentially vulnerable services located in, uh, in Luxembourg, or at least IP addresses that are resolving to, to Luxembourg. So getting to the point on taking down the world uh, with this attack. So the mindset of the Max Payne is actually to get inside the ISP-based area or get as close to the, to the target as possible. And uh, thereby, you don't need the usual one terabit or two terabit, 10 terabit attacks. You actually just need to reach usually the, the goal of the bandwidth of whoever is being attacked. So we are back to more or less uh, removing a lot of the, the perimeters that, uh, that could defend us out there. So what you need to do looking at it from the attacker's perspective is starting to do a little more, a little more intelligent intelligence gathering prior to actually starting this attack. So it's like gathering what IP addresses is it that you're attacking, what uh, CDRs is this around, what ASN is this inside. If you do a trace route, what is closest to this target, what route does it take, geolocations. Uh, the reason for geolocations is that, is that a lot of companies, when they are targeted, says, okay, where are my main company or uh, my main business? So my main business might be in Denmark or it may, might be in Luxembourg. So anything outside of this area, let's just remove that to actually mitigate the attack. Uh, and then you also have peering partners. So again, the mindset is to get as close as possible. Also, if you, from the attacker's perspective, started by doing like port scans, to identify if the target you're attacking actually already have something exposed. So if they have a DNS server themselves, well, a good thing to, could be to attack that company with DNS traffic. Uh, it could also be NTP. So, so trying to uh, get into what is actually already there because that makes it a lot harder to actually uh, pull the good traffic from the bad traffic. So the, the different stages in the, in this setup, and again, this is nothing to do with the actual attack, but the, the preparedness for the, the attack that could come. So you start by collecting a lot of data, and this is in my case where I've collected a lot of UDP uh, data out there, but it could also be from a, a botnet or whatever the, the bad guys have in hand. Then you analyze it, trying to figure out what outcome can this have. So what kind of, again, uh, data do I need to send compared to what I receive? Then you need to store it. Then you need to search in it whenever you want to choose a target. And afterwards, actually getting the, the list of, uh, of systems you want to use in this attack. So for the stage one, a lot of the data that I, I got for this was actually open sourced already. So we have like the Rapid7 open data. We have the census, Shodan. Uh, a lot of other services are sharing uh, information on UDP protocols out there that could be abused. But in my case, I also had some protocols that weren't being scanned. So I put up a, a internet-wide scan to get the data myself. So the next thing to do is to analyze it. Again, this is where you try to figure out how much do you get out of it. So in, uh, in my setup, what I did was I sent a request with what I uh, had represented as a, an attack request and recorded the response back. And based on that, uh, did some analysis on it to, to get some idea on what, uh, how much amplification in, in this case it would, uh, would perform. All of this went into a, a log stash where one of my issues were that if I had to go over the data again, I could get duplicates. So I had to put in a, a unique fingerprint where I had the destination IP, port, protocol, and attack description. So I created a fingerprint of that to ensure that I had a, a unique uh, identifier for the, the specific one. 
And then uh, I enrich the data with uh, some country codes, AS uh, name numbers, uh, and I removed anything from the data set that where amplification was uh, below two. So I needed a, a specific topping to, to actually get into it. So this gives some information that were pushed into uh, to Elastic with the amplification factor, the sent bytes, received bytes, time in milliseconds, because I also needed to check the response, uh, how much uh, latency that could be in there, the protocol, the country codes, the destination IPs, ports, ASN, number and name. And all of this went into uh, the, the Elastic search. So the next thing that the bad guys can start to do with this is to actually say uh, or get a, a protocol effectiveness. How effective is this protocol or how effective is this attack uh, to use? So you have like the, the SIP protocol where you send a small amount and you don't get as much data back, so you need much more volume on the, the SIP parts or the SIP hosts to actually do this, where if you have like charge in, you only send one byte and you get a massive, usually, uh, amount of, of feedback of it. Again, I know in my, we're going to say data set here, I haven't taken into comparison of how much you can manipulate the data. But this is again looking from an attacker's perspective where they can figure out how to use the least amount of volume or systems to get the task done. So in the data search, and this is where we start to get into the, the Max Payne part is that it's like ripples in the water. You need to start as close to the, to the, to the target and then move your way uh, outwards. So you get your tier one as close to the target, tier two and et cetera out there. And this could as easily be added additional tiers depending on how it, this would be, uh, be built. So for the demonstration, no animals, people, websites, networks were harmed. Uh, it's all, what can you say, based on, on the data set, so I haven't done any uh, targeting attacks for it. So the, all of the, the information will be, uh, or is already up on, uh, on GitHub on this, uh, with the proof of concept on how to use the data. I have like the, how the log stash, the elastic search were set up. Uh, all of the core data that I use for this research will also be published. It is already here. Uh, I'll take that at the end. So uh, to the demonstrations of it. So in this case, I used uh, an ESA website. So starting from here, in the, the Max Payne uh, tool that I or proof of concept that I created, what I'm doing is that I tell that I want to start with a, with a tier 2 that has a CDR 24. So this is just to, to figure out how to, uh, how to get as close as possible to the, to the target as possible. Uh, how much, how long backwards I need to uh, search in time. What the minimum amplification level needs to be. And a guesstimate of how many requests I will get per uh, per second. So in this case, I've set it to 25. Uh, I want to have data extracted from a tier one to a tier six and then the target. And based on this, the tool goes into the, the elastic and starts to extract information. So the first part is that it's extracting the IP address from the domain. From there on, it will look because in this case, the, the IP address result to a uh, slash 24. There weren't anything directly close to the Inisa website. Since the, the IP address that it had here also was a slash 24, in the second uh, tier we couldn't see anything either. So now we go out to the ASN number of that IP address. And this is where it starts to get interesting. And all of these things are some of the things that Max Payne is collecting on its own uh, during the, the pre-analysis. So from this ASN number, we start to get quite a lot of potentially uh, systems that you could use. So what was also related here is that if you had like a botnet on the side, you could add this to the data set as well. So uh, again, an estimate of the amount of traffic that you could generate uh, if it was the, the 25 uh, 
queries or uh, requests per second, you would reach uh, 1.8 gigabit per second attack at this level. So in some cases, this, this would actually be on the inside of the network, meaning that the ISP-based scrubber, which is usually implemented on the border, would not be effective. So now you're on the inside. So this would again go back to how much bandwidth would the potential target actually have uh, to fill it up. So we don't need necessarily a, a 10 gigabit attack. So if you move outwards toward the upstreaming partners of this AES, you certainly start to reach a 7.8 gigabit per second attack uh, potential. And <clears throat> this is again where a lot of the data is to get as close to the target, move outwards. The tier five in this setup is that it's the country code from where the IP address is located, in this case, Romania. So here, from here, I could do an attack on around 11 gigabit per second. Again, this would potentially be able to be stopped by the, what can you say, attack uh, or the, the scrubbing center, but depending on where it's, it's having the, their customer base, they can't necessarily filter it out. And then if that's not enough, then you have more or less the rest of the world from outside to start using in. And this is where you could potentially have a, a tier six that would be converted into having more specific protocols or something that was more related to it. So this can be adapted to whatever the attacker uh, would, would, would see it as. So what can actually be done with this? So the issue is that I've not been able to find any technical solutions out there uh, that exist to be able to mitigate this. So the only thing that needs to be or can be done is maybe digital hygiene, uh, maybe starting to push some requests to your ISP to actually get them to have some, if you are buying a service from them, what are they doing on the inside of the network to actually remove some of the, the badness that, uh, that potentially could harm you. Uh, there are the BDP ranking, uh, there are the shadow servers, uh, data that you could potentially get your hands on, at least to ensure that you're not part of the problem if you have an ASN yourself. Uh, in, uh, in some cases, I saw in the, in the data set that uh, in Brazil, you had like some a service provider there that was actually having all their broadband users where they exposed SNMP on the outside of, uh, of their uh, IP addresses. Uh, I also saw in the data set that you could actually initiate a, a D small DDoS attack from North Korea, so that would be the proof that they are bad guys. Uh, or should we start going into much more, what can you say, drastic measurements to say that if you've been part of an attack, you end up on a block list. So we start actually to block providers that are not securing their systems. So for now, since we don't have anything, what can you say, technical to secure us, we need to get someone to start securing their, uh, their systems even better. And a, a bad thing would be to end up like with the memcache where I saw that a lot of, uh, especially uh, VPS, is simply just blocked memcache overall. So instead of removing the problem, they just shut it down. And potentially this could be, be the same thing that we're seeing. BCP38 in uh, relation to uh, UDP is always uh, a good choice. Uh, and again, trying to, uh, to clean up everything as, uh, as fast as possible or uh, avoid the, the problem even occurring. So, uh, big thanks actually to, to Rapid7 because they helped me. I pushed some information to them uh, on some services that I would like some information on, and they gave it back to me. I had a Danish provider that allowed me to do some internet-wide scans from them. A uh, good friend of mine, Mikkel Vingo, who uh, put up with a lot of sanity uh, checks on, uh, on my thoughts. And uh, remember, we need something uh, done before the, the ice is melting. Uh, the information or the, the core data set of this, which is around 300 gigabyte of uh, compressed files, raw uh, JSON, 
uh, or yeah, uh, packed JSON files can be located while you're here from the HackLU server, uh, HackLU.local, and it's the folders uh, 2016, 17, and 18 OK that can be used, and uh, everything else is uh, is up on GitHub, including this uh, presentation. So uh, that was all. Thank you. All right, what a way to end the day. We've seen this similar result at previous Hack Glue years. Any questions to Dennis? We have one in the back. Thank you. Oop. Hello. This is on. Uh, thank you. That was terrific. Um, I'd like to put in a plug for BCP38 because after adding rate limiting to DNS, because of course DNS servers have to answer questions, uh, they have to be well provisioned. So blocking traffic at the DNS side is hard. I want to say that in the case of BCP38, the um, Internet Society is doing some good work with uh, their uh, MANRS, M-A-N-R-S. Uh, but we in this room could also do a lot. Uh, audit your ISP. Make sure they are doing BCP38. And if they won't, don't buy from them. It could start with us. Totally agreed. More questions? Everybody's stunned yeah. and in maximum pain. And if any questions afterwards, yeah, I'll be here uh, the rest of the week. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dennis.